Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. Our theme for March in the Mixed Media Emporium on Facebook is boho. And I've decided that I am going to make a boho journal and I'm going to work on it throughout this month. So I have an old food box here and a piece of paper that just came in some packaging. And I'm basically just going to cover the box with some some of the, the, the brown paper. Now I had previously cut this box, I got a whole load of these from someone and I had started to make them into kind of mini journals. So this will be a mini journal. It is roughly four inches by four inches. So I'm just going to take out that central spine because I'm going to make this a no so journal again. So as I say, theme for this month is boho and boho can mean different things to different people but what I'm going to try and do is to create a journal that has some really positive vibes about it. You know I want to continue this month with, with just looking at how I can imbue everything I do with positivity at the moment so it's going to be boho but again it's going to be another positivity journal. I'm not entirely certain what I'm going to put in it at the moment and this month will mainly be about building it but I may get the chance to do some pages as well. If not in the next couple of weeks then certainly in the period ahead, in the weeks ahead. So all I've done is to make myself a little template as to where I'm going to punch the holes both in the cover and in the pages that I do. Because my plan with this one is to have these as kind of single pages rather than sewn in signatures in any way. So initially I am just preparing the box and it's quite handy that it's square because it doesn't really matter what way any of the pages go. Once I've punched them obviously they can only go in one way or, or, or the other but uh, when it's four by four like this it could be turned around at any point. And I'm just going to use some PVA glue here and all I'm going to do to begin with is to put a coat on to actually seal the cardboard. Cardboard can absorb the glue and I have seen where if I put the paper directly down on top of this now there is a chance that it would start to lift again because the glue is absorbed into the cardboard. So this in effect just helps seal it. Now this could be done with any type of box, a cereal box, any type of food box, some old pieces of cardboard or even just some, some cardstock. If you wanted something a bit heavier then glue some cardstock together and it could be made any size. I just want to do a mini journal this time. So I left that to dry a bit. I ended up putting the heat tool on it just to dry it that little bit quicker. And then what I'll do is to start to stick the brown paper down onto it. As I say, that just came in packaging. I could have painted directly onto this, but I decided to put the paper down just because it felt like that would be a little bit quicker and sometimes with the paint it needs two or three layers so that you don't see through don't see the writing that's on the box right through the paint. So I'll just use some more glue and get that paper in place. So as I say boho can mean different things to different people. For this what I'm trying to do is a kind of aged effect. I want this to look like a, a well-worn journal again. I think when I was making last month's journal I said I, I like it kind of well-worn. It's like an old jumper that you never want to throw away. Well this might be like an old pair of jeans that you don't want to throw away. You know you just become so comfortable in it. And it really is very simple and straightforward to make. And one of the good things about this style is you can actually add to it at any point in time. And I'll, I'll say a bit more about that as we go on. So I'm just going to take a plastic card, smooth that out, just making sure that it's fully adhered. Now the other thing that I'm going to do, and it depends on your style, how you would approach something like this, but I'm going to let the paper hang off the edges a little bit. I don't want this to be a neat edge around it. 
and you'll see in just a moment that I, I will leave that to dry and then I will take the two pieces apart. Now it's not entirely dry at this point but it, it was fine to do this. So I'm just pu pulling it and it will give me a rough edge and that's exactly what I want. You could do this with a ruler, just tear it down a ruler. You'll see me do that in a little while. Uh, I think when I do the next side. I'm just re-punching my holes at this point because I don't want to lose them by putting the two uh, sides of paper on. So just re-punching them as I go along. And then just going to tear some of those edges off. But as I say, very much leaving the edges rough. Now obviously could have wrapped the paper right round and then put the next bit on but that's not the look I was I was going for here. But if you are going to do this and you prefer that kind of neater look then you know by all means uh, fold it over and do a nice neat job or cut round edges. It really just depends on the look that you're going for. So I'm taking a bit more time with this showing you this. It, it is a uh, I think at double speed, but uh, just taking my time to show you all the stages of this. So there we go. I've, I've put some glue on again. I'd put my initial layer on, let it soak in. Now this layer, and again, just going to go over it with the card. Now I'm going to pick this up quite quickly because I don't there's glue on my mat and I don't want it sticking on the other side. So just getting that up as soon as I can. I will quickly go over it with the card again. And then I'll clear that mat out the way because it is a bit sticky. And I will leave that to dry. Now I think in the end I did actually put the heat tool on it just so that I could get it done and get on with the filming. So you'll see it's quite curled up there. That could be flattened out, but uh, what I'm going to do first of all is just to tear the edges again. So the paper on each side is now bonded together because it's been glued on each side. I took the glue beyond the edge of the cardboard when I was putting the second piece of paper down. Then I'll show you just how you can use the ruler if you want. It makes it ever so slightly neater, but you can still kind of pull it and get that ragged edge if you want it. So again, I'm going to punch the holes in. I don't want to lose them. You will see the edge of, of the cardboard box. That is perfectly fine as far as I'm concerned. But again, if you don't like that, then you can just cut round it. And I'm just going to smooth these out. I could have put them down under something heavy, but I wanted to move on with the project. So just kind of straightening them out a bit. There's not a back or a front. I'm just looking at how the two pieces sit together. One of them is slightly uh, wider, so I'm going to put that to the back. So I'm now going to take a stencil. I'm not sure what make this is or where it's from, but it's one that I've had a while. I like it because it's got that kind of slight paisley pattern effect to it. And I'm just going to use some modelling paste here. Now, you could do this with just gesso or paint. All I'm trying to do is create a little bit of a raised effect. Now, I don't actually put it on very thick because, again, I want it to dry quite quickly and I'm not looking for anything that's kind of over embellished at this stage. But I'm just going to put some on the back and some on the front. And trying to get an uneven effect. And this is just to add a little bit of interest to the covers. You could scrape up the little bits if needs be, but I'm going to leave them because, as I say, I'm looking to create an aged effect. So I did dry them a bit with the heat tool. You can test if modelling paste is dry by just kind of pushing your nail into a little bit. And as I say, it wasn't a thick coat, so it dried pretty quickly. So I've pulled out a whole load of kind of craft acrylics. Some of these are getting pretty empty, so I'm having to dip into the bottom. This one was quite thick. But what I'm doing here is just a, a kind of dry brush effect. 
looking for the edged effect, so not looking to have an e uneven coat of paint. If you're going to do this, if you've got an old paintbrush, that's the best way because it is very hard on the paintbrush. So I tend to have two or three older brushes that I can use for this type of thing. I like the effect that it gives and again because I'm dry brushing the paint's going on reasonably thin and it will dry pretty quickly. The paint at the bottom of that particular one was quite thick but what I would suggest is use what you've got. I've got quite a few of these crafters paints and some of them I've had a long time and I thought this is a good way to start using these up. And you know the effect that I'm looking for it doesn't matter even if they're a bit blobby. One of them had quite a bit of a skin on it so I, I managed to get that out and was still able to use it. A little bit too much coming out there so I just put it onto that old plastic lid that I use as a palette sometimes. And just looking to, if they blend in as I go, that's fine. If not, just going on the top of them, doesn't really matter. And I'm not looking here to get every single piece covered. So it doesn't matter if there's little bits around the edges or little bits within the actual modelling paste. If there's bits showing through, that's okay. Because as I say, looking for an aged effect here. So I'm going to give that a reasonable dry at this point before I go in with some other colours. And boho can be bright colours or it could be more muted. I just decided this time that I wanted something bright. So I've got a kind of turquoise here. I think that particular one was maybe desert turquoise, but I've also got a turquoise in another brand. In the other one is, is Hobbycraft's own brand. Again, simply because some of these were getting a bit far down, so I, I pulled out a few. I'm just building up the colours. Scrubbing it out, scrubbing quite hard with that brush. You really can't go wrong with this type of technique. If there's a bit you don't like, then you just go back with another paint and go over the top of it. So, you know, here, if I decided I preferred the kind of deep reds more, I would have just gone back in with that. And in fact, I think in a moment I do go back in with a little bit. But if you want it more turquoise, make it more turquoise. And again, as I always say with this, and I think I say this in just about every video, there's, there's no right or wrong with these. There's no point where you say that's it done uh, or, you know, I can't say that's it done. I just get a sense of that's fine. I'm happy with it at that point. That will do for me. Again, just going to dry it. I'm going to do the other sides. But I'm not putting any of the paste on the other side. So there we go. I've got both sides done now. What I'm now going to do is to take this metallic bronze, again just using the same brush and I did not clean the brush off at any point. It, to me it doesn't matter if it's still got some of the other colour on it, it will just all add to the interest. And what I'm going to start to do is I go over, I start on the bit with the modelling paste just to highlight some of that. I'm going in with a reasonably thin layer but I'll take it out and beyond that. So again, trying to give it that aged, worn look. And again, one of the things that I seem to see in so many videos is with these things, I will start with a little bit and then I'll go in with more because it's always easier to, to add more than it is to take away. Although sometimes, you know, you can get a wet rag and, and wipe it back a bit. So just building that up bit by bit. It's already drying. I was just testing it there, already drying. You see I'm now going in, adding a little bit more. Not trying to get an even effect over it though, so some bits will have more than others. 
starting to go around the edges a little bit and it kind of picks up the edge of the cardboard box in places and I quite like that effect. Again, just going round the edges, not trying to get it even, so in some places I, I will put on more than others. I'm just quite liking the way that those colours are kind of blending together. And I could actually see as I was doing this that uh, the bristles on the brush were, were getting smaller by the end of it. I'm sure they were much smaller than they were when I started this. So turning it over, I'm going to do the exact same on the other side. Obviously there's nothing on this side by way of the decoration, so it is more just a case of going in and painting round. Dragging it out, brushing it out, leaving it slightly thicker in some pieces, some places than, than the others. So as I say, looking to create another positivity journal but just this time with that kind of boho theme. I had so enjoyed doing my envelope journal. I enjoyed the fact that it was a kind of art journal this time and uh, enjoyed that so much that I thought I want to do another journal and one that I can work in in the coming weeks and, and months. So this was very much just about getting it together. Back on the front and the back covers again on the outside bits and just going round that just adding little bits here and there. And I may even after today go back in and do a bit more. This was very much about getting the bases done. You could at this point go in with some gesso to tone it down if you wanted, or you could do as I do here and just taking a piece of sandpaper and I'm just roughing it up ever so slightly. It's quite a coarse sandpaper this one. Going over the the texture paste, paste and you'll see it just brings out a few little white bits. It takes it right back down to that. I don't want to overdo it, but I just want to kind of rough it up a little bit. Give it a bit of a scratched effect as well. Again, as if it's a journal that's well-travelled and that's kicked around in a, a suitcase or a bag. It's been around the world a few times. So just looking at them and thinking, yep, quite happy. You could at this point pull off bits if you wanted and then just a bit of paint just to take the white off. But I'm very happy with, with the way that those have turned out. So I've now taken out three sheets of, this is actually a watercolour paper and it's a cold pressed so it's, it's very textured. This was not an expensive watercolour paper, I think it came from, it could have been Aldi's or Lidl's or B&M which is a bit like the kind of dollar store. It wasn't expensive at all. And in fact, I didn't pay anything for it because I got it from someone else. But I thought this is, this again is the type of paper that I want to use, but you could use any sort of paper for this, including magazine paper. But I'm just gonna measure out four inches all the way along there and tear it into strips. Now, again, I could have used the rotary tool, but I want kind of rough edges on it. And if I wanted a neat line, I would tear it quite slowly, but I was pulling it quicker so that it would give that kind of rough effect. Just want distressed edges. What I'll then do is mark it again at four inch points. 
and I'm going to have a little bit left at the end but what I'll do with that is some of those will be made in future weeks into tags but I'm actually going to make some into small pages so I'm going to do that with the three sheets and you'll see there how these will fit in so what I'm going to do next is oh if, if you did want to rough up there just take a pair of scissors or a distress tool if you've got it I'm just going to leave them you know so any of the straight edges could be roughed up as well so I'm just going to use my little template now and punch the holes in these and you'll see that that fits in that will fit in there quite neatly Okay, so I'm going to go on and punch all of those now. And now that I have them, it will be a case of starting to decorate these. So I've only done four of the smaller ones just now, because I will be adding more pages in future. And I've just pulled out a whole load of these little craft acrylics again. And I'm just going to do the exact same technique here of dry brushing. I won't dry the pages as I go along because it's a thin layer. I will use different colours. There is a possibility that mud might be made, but I'm not concerned. This is just about getting down some background colour. Now you could leave the pages on the inside just white, you know, depending on what you want to use a journal for. I'm going to be adding things to the pages. I might use some as kind of little art journal type pages. I have some ideas, I'm not entirely certain yet, but I just want a journal that even if I look at it just now, it has some colour to it, so that when I come to do the pages, they already have some, some colour on and I'm not stand, starting from the blank sheet. Many of them might change as uh, when the time comes, and if that's the case, that's fine. But I've got that starting point down. So you see I'm adding that pink, I think it's called Cherry Blossom Pink. It was never one that I was terribly keen on, so I'm quite happy to use that. And you'll see it blends in a little bit with the green, and I actually prefer the colour of it when it blends in a bit. I think the green was a sort of citron. I, it's quite a nice green, I like it. But it's needle at the bottom, so this was just such a good way to use some of those paints that were almost done anyway. Now sometimes people do say to me, why do I use the big tubes of paint and not these little paints? These, as I've said before, do actually work out more expensive in the UK than buying some of the bigger tubes of paint. When you look at it per milliliter, these little craft acrylics are very expensive. I know in the US, I don't know about other countries, but I know you can get them at a reasonable price. Here, it uh, works out cheaper to buy. The bigger tubs. I, I, don't, I don't know why that is. It's one of those strange things. But by the same token, I do like these because they're small, they're handy, you know, they don't take up a lot of space. You get them in a nice range of colours. And I'm just mixing colours together and some I'm just mixing the same, you, you know, maybe blues, other the kind of green and pink and I'm not looking to cover the cards in their entirety so I don't mind if there's little bits of white still showing. What I like about the paper though is that it is textured so the paint sits quite nicely on it, it doesn't get deep into it but you could use anything, you could use magazine pages and just paint magazine pages. So there we go, I've got them all done now, my brush the bristles seem significantly shorter than they were when I started, that doesn't surprise me. And all I'm going to do now is look to kind of pull these together. At this stage, I'm not looking to get them in any particular order. I'm just, you know, putting some at the back, some at the front, some in the middle, really just pulling them together. You could look to uh, 
have two blue pages sitting together if you wanted to do a double spread. Now I did notice that a couple of the holes were punched near the edge so at some point I will go back and reinforce them somehow but that's not necessary just now. So I have these little, I don't know what they're called, is it O-rings or something? Or is an O-ring a tap washer? I don't know. Anyway, these little rings. And I'm just going to use these to hold the pages together just now. You could just simply thread some, well, thread or string even through it. But this is just my way of keeping them together. I know that when I add in more pages, these particular rings are not going to be big enough. But I'm, I'm happy with the way this has turned out just now. So I hope you'll join me with this project. I will be doing more on this journal next week. So Nina's also got a video this week and I will leave the link to that below along with the link to the Mixed Media Emporium. I hope you've enjoyed this and see you again next time. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.